Like any tech channel, I get lots of emails to review new products all day every day. Some are actual smart home products, some are for products that aren't even remotely close to things I normally review, some are just super weird and some are legitimately sketchy. But when Sonoff sent me over some of their new light switches that has built in RGB, my initial reaction was to say, have we taken things a bit too far? But I took it upon myself to check them out anyways because, well, someone has to take one for the team to see if these are actually useful or just a gimmick. Full transparency as always, Sonoff did send me the TX Ultimate for me to check out. So the TX Ultimate is the new and improved successor to the original TX series with a number of notable improvements. Firstly, the touch areas are way bigger than they were on the original TX switches, which had really quite a small tap targets, meaning you had to really make sure and hit them in the right spot. The new TX Ultimates have full height touch targets, which is a huge improvement. And the second improvement is that they now have haptic feedback, so you can actually feel if you activated the switch or not. And that's done by a tiny little vibration motor inside of the switch. So satisfying. And there is also a little speaker inside of here too that plays a sound when you touch the button. You can of course disable the haptics if you don't like those, but I much prefer the feedback of the vibration motor personally. The final big change is actually the thing that made me initially think, and I didn't think I would ever be saying this, have we gone too far with RGB? Once I actually started using it and I saw it in person, I actually think it's a pretty cool addition. Inside there is 28 individually addressable RGB LEDs with some really nice diffusion. Sonoff provides a few presets in their app, which meh, I, I think are pretty gimmicky, like party mode, is anyone really partying over beside their light switch? But then you can just set it to use more acceptable modes, shall we say, or just use single colours, which is where I think this becomes really useful. For something like an ambient light to find your way to the toilet at night, or you could use them for notifications, maybe turning them all a certain colour to remind you it's bin day, or maybe even for fire exit lights, turning them all red or green if the smoke alarm goes off in the middle of the night, or as an ambient light for your children, I can think of a lot of different use cases that I think would be really useful. Another unique thing about these switches is that you can customise the faceplate. So Sonoff sells different faceplates like this one, uh, this matte black with these stars sort of look, or you've also got this more colourful one uh, with the sort of animals on the front. Uh, and yeah, you can literally switch out the cover um, so it just snaps off, really easy to do, just takes a couple of seconds. So they just pull off like that, and then you can put on a completely different cover. Uh, it just pushes on like that and you're good to go. You can then use it. Pretty cool way to just change out the style and change out the cover to suit different rooms and yeah, just kind of fun. I was initially a bit worried that because they made the covers removable that it would really cheapen the device and make it feel badly made and it would creak and just feel flimsy. But the covers are actually really solid and feel pretty good. And yeah, the switch is definitely not cheap or doesn't feel cheap, at least to me for the price. I am kind of disappointed that there is only three covers available at the moment. So you get the standard white one that comes with the switch, you get the black and the stars one, and then you also get this colorful animal sort of one, and that's kind of it. There is a really cool opportunity here, I think, to really lean into the customizability of these and have loads of different designs. Even if they did like five or six fun solid colors, that would be really cool and also easy to do. And then some other fun designs like you have here with this one, there is so much possibilities. And then you could even do a competition and have community made designs, that would be really sick. It'll also be really cool if they released STLs for these covers that you could 3D print and make your own. Although I'm not sure if the touch would still work through the 3D printed ones. But still, there is loads of fun possibilities with these and kind of sad that there is only three different options. Maybe they will have more released in the future though. Price wise, these come in around $25 to $30 depending on how many buttons you want. There is a single, a double and a triple button option. And then the covers are like $4 each. 
uh, if you want something other than white, which is actually pretty good. Build quality, like I mentioned, is really good, much better than previous Sonoff switches I've tried. They feel really solid considering they are plastic and considering they do have removable covers. No issues with build quality at the price. And I will also mention that I am not personally a huge fan of touch switches per se. I much prefer physical smart switches with a nice clicky feel to them, but that is entirely subjective. You may prefer touch buttons, in which case these are a good option. Though Sonoff, if you are watching this, can you please make this product with like the RGB and the covers and everything like this? So this exact product, but with a physical switch option, that would be really cool. The Sonoff app lets you change things like the ambient light mode, which light effects happen when you press the buttons, inching, you can connect it to Amazon, Google Home or SmartThings, you can create groups, create timers and all of that good stuff. It also lets you toggle on the LAN control, which then lets it work with the Sonoff LAN integration in Home Assistant. At the moment, it only supports toggling the relays, so no ambient light option and you also can't detect the button presses, but if you're using the Sonoff app anyways, then it might not be too big of an issue for you. And this is a really new device so that I imagine that the Sonoff LAN integration will get updated to work with this device, which would be really cool. But there's also another way that you can also get it to work with Home Assistant. I said also twice, but just keep going. If we open up the front cover, we can of course see that Sonoff has used an ESP32 like they do in many of their products, which we love to see. And if we look closelier, they've left four convenient pins to easily flash this guy without soldering. So that means I was able to get this working with ESP Home. Slight side note, glad to see Sonoff getting back to doing what they do best and creating ESP32 devices, making them easy to flash and DIY to do whatever you want with. Good job. One small thing I would like you guys to do though, however, is to just make the GPIO pinout available on your website. That would be really cool. I mean, you make them so easy to flash. So if you could just add the pinout too, that would save me and everyone else a little bit of time. ESP Home loaded on here without any issues. And after quite a bit of trial and error, I was able to get most things working. So I can control the individual relays, the haptic vibration motor, the RGB LEDs, which appear to just be WS2812 based LEDs, which is cool. And then finally the button presses. The button presses were actually a little bit more tricky as they don't use just GPIOs for that. They use the serial to another MCU on this daughter board. But once I figured that out, I can then get the buttons into Home Assistant 2. And the reason that is cool is because this lets you decouple the buttons from the relay. So for example, if you have two light switches in your house currently and you buy the three button version of this, you could then assign that third spare button to do something else in Home Assistant, which is really handy. The only thing I've really got left to figure out is the speaker, which would be really useful, I think, for little text to speech notifications but I haven't really spent any time looking at getting the speaker working just yet, so that is something I still need to do. Maybe I'll post a follow-up on Twitter or something like that if I get it working. Finally, because there are ESP32s inside of here rather than ESP8266, you can use these for Bluetooth proxy, which is really useful, as you'll likely have one of these in each room. So you would really get good coverage of Bluetooth using Bluetooth proxies with something like this. And that is it, quick one today. I actually had some fun for a few hours messing around with these light switches in Home Assistant and getting ESP Home loaded onto these and figuring out all the pinouts. It was nice to get back to a DIY thing just like this. Certainly these are a big improvement over their previous switches and definitely like where they are going. Oh, and Sonoff, if you can give me like this product but with a nice feeling physical mechanical switch, you will have me sold. Like basically make the Switchman version of this product. It'll be great, trust me, just do it. But that is my thoughts. What did you think about the new TX Ultimates? Do you think the RGB is too far? Like I thought, or can you see some uses for it? Let me know down in the comments. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please make sure to drop this video a like and get subscribed if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next video.